Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and it has been quite an epic weekend in terms of my photography endeavours. I Obviously, I'm usually building and flying simulated spaceships or reading up on rocket science, but this weekend I was just running around taking photos. In particular, there was the SpaceX SAOCOM launch, which I have shown here. This is running at about eight times normal speed. And this video does just come from my old iPhone because, you know, this is the wide angle view. And I was very fortunate that I did actually capture the entire launch, stage separation, ascent into orbit, and of course, even the boost back burn all get captured in single side the frame. And there's the re-entry burn slowing the rocket down before it hits the atmosphere so it doesn't burn up. Now, this was from Oakland. This is 230 miles away from the launch site. But rocket launches are indeed spectacular enough to be visible from this distance. It just took about uh, 45 seconds after launch before it got high enough above the horizon for the flare of the exhaust to be visible. And this was actually through thick smoke that was from a, a wildfire up in Fairfield. And it had been blowing south all the way through Santa Cruz and making the horizon very hard to see. But as it went upwards, it became easier and easier to discern details. And as you can see here, we're starting to see texture in the exhaust. We can actually see this is a rocket exhaust. This is all nine first stage Merlin engines producing something like 760 tons of thrust. But of course, we cannot see the thrust. We can only see its effects. And we can also see the inefficiencies of the system by which they produce this thrust, the chemical energy releasing light that I can see from over 200 miles away. This video, incidentally, is taken with my Sony RX10. It has 4K video and it has a lens that magnifies by a factor of 25. So this is 600 millimeter effective uh, lens. Uh, your focal length and yeah you can see the first stage you can see the second stage and you can see the fairings as they fall away not only that in this cloud of expanding exhaust gas you can see the uh, the reddish area as that is you know closer to the horizon that is essentially the sun is setting there so the sun is reddened you can also see here the uh, various attitude control thrusters creating pulses look at those these are cold gas jet thrusters and they just fire for a very short amount of time and then turn off. And so what they produce is essentially a hemispherical wall of gas expanding out from their nozzles. Eventually, the returning booster dropped below the sun and there, so the illumination became red and then eventually disappeared as it fell into the night once more. But it would still keep going down. This is before it hit the atmosphere. This is red because of the illumination of the sun. It's not because of atmospheric heating or engines or anything else like that. Meanwhile, the upper stage continues on towards orbit. It's using a single Merlin engine, and all that exhaust that it's producing is quite easy to see in floating up there in space and being illuminated by the sun. It's tempting to think of this light as being the engine, but what that is is that's the exhaust gases are coming out being illuminated by the sun. The engine isn't nearly as bright as that. It's also possible to see pressure waves radiating out from the engine. Also, you might wonder why are these spokes evident in the engine? Because there's only a single engine here, right? And as far as I understand it, this is an artifact of the fuel injector inside the engine. SpaceX's Merlin engines use what's called a slit type pintle injector, which is a bit like those garden hoses that produce a, you know, um, a, a cone shaped spray. Same idea, but instead of spraying water, they're spraying fuel and oxi oxidizer, and they're smashing them into each other to make sure they're mixed by the turbulence so the combustion is clean. And apparently this does tend to produce concentrated regions. And when the outside pressure is low enough, these features actually get preserved through the engine. At least that's how I understand it. I really need to do that video on fuel injectors. Anyway, one of the big highlights of this mission was that it was going to be the first return to launch site landing of a Falcon 9 rocket on the west coast. Unfortunately, from 200 miles away, the curvature of the Earth would hide any landing burn. So I have to just show this from the video 
from the official SpaceX feed of the rocket, the booster coming back down to their new landing site at Space Launch Complex 4 at Vandenberg Air Force Base. Beautiful. Well, other than that constant condensation there. I'm sure that some of the people with remote cameras have a fantastic uh, picture of this. Actually, we're already seeing some of these great pictures come in and people all over California saw this and yes, there were lots of people claiming it was UFOs or chemtrails or whatever other conspiracy theory just is floating around. Look, it was simply stunning because it launched into the sunlight. But yeah, pretty much the whole weekend for me was spent taking videos of things flying or things in space. It was Fleet Week in San Francisco and that meant, yes, the Blue Angels were in town doing what Blue Angels do. Fly very fast, fly in formation, or sometimes fly towards each other and make you think they're going to crash. And then you have the likes of Sean D. Tucker, who seems to just continually put his plane through insane stalls. And given that this is San Francisco and that the displays take place over the bay, I'm amazed that everyone has the willpower to not fly under the Golden Gate Bridge, because you know that that's what they want to do. Anyway, there was one other thing, but I'll cover that in a separate video. I'm going to leave you with some highlights from the Fleet Week air shows. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. restoring right now so he can center it up in the nation as he hires pilots to keep telling this story across the nation. With over 50... It was wartime. 19... Commercial pilot certificate, an instrument in single multi engine ratings, as well as being a certified flight instructor and now flies for the airlines. And he would like to thank KO Websites Inc., Odyssey Batteries, and Airtronics for their. Wow, he's skydancing today, folks, because that's what he came here to do. This guy studied in Embry Riddle Aeronautical University and graduated, went on to fly for an airline right here in San Francisco, but guess what? He quit his job to fly under the mentorship and tutelage of Sean D. Tucker. Right now, Sean.